Hi, I'm Jake Devonball, and welcome to Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, a podcast where me and my friends talk about nostalgic moments and pop culture from our childhoods. We interview people such as actors, producers, composers, puppeteers, and more. We'll be sharing our favorite memories, talk about behind the scenes moments, and so much more. I'm your host, Jake Devonball, and welcome to this Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show episode. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show. And happy Valentine's Day to you all. I'm your host, Jake, and our co-host we have for today, Chris Bixby, Matt Bingle, and Wyatt McCullough. How are you guys? Amazing. Happy Valentine's We are really Day. good. We are good. Doing great. So today we get another composer in our show for you today. He he did, he, he was a songwriter, composer to a couple of shows that we know of which is the Fresh Beat Band and Boost Cousin You, which I know he did some other stuff too, not just yeah, those shows, but we're going to talk like about Peter a little Rabbit. Yeah. Wings Club. Kind of other shows. Wings yeah. Club. Wings Club. Yeah. Whatever. Me too. <laughs> and he worked with some artists like Celine Dion. Yeah. Yes, oh, yeah. That's right. He did. Right. That is right. And we got him. And here he is. Bon applause to Pierre Sizzo. Pierre, how are yeah. you? What is happening, gentlemen? How are you? Good. I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Great. Great, Great to be here, and by here I mean in my own uh, studio. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So the yeah. first question, the this lovely is... introduction. Yeah, yeah. Fire away. I'm, I'm ready. All right, let's fire away. <laughs> All right. All right. So the first question to start off is that how you guys start as being a songwriter, producer, musician, and also as well as being a writer. Good question. Well, um, wow, that's going way back. <laughs> um, <laughs> Way back. <laughs> it's where we got done. Any of you guys are born. Uh, you know, I just came up in uh, a, a very musical family. Uh, my mother is a concert pianist. My father was not in music, but he was very talented and was like a amateur opera singer and then and, and played the tuba and played the drums. And so we would jam. So it was a very musical household. And I became a musician very early on. By the time yeah. I was like 10, 11, 12, I was like really freakishly good on the guitar and that became like my whole thing in high school i was a big van halen fan i wanted to be the next eddie van halen um but i noticed that all the bands that i was in i was also like writing all the songs and alongside the uh, the hard rock stuff i was listening to the van halens and the zeppelins and the aerosmith and the real guitar driven rock music of that time i was also fascinated by the songwriters singer songwriters billy joel and elton john and carol king and paul simon and all those guys like but yes. I wasn't like aware that I was into all this different stuff. And as I got into my teens, the fact that I could write songs well became more and more of a unique thing for someone my age, right? Like there were other kids that were really good on instruments and stuff you'd find in every high school or two. There'd be someone that was an amazing drummer or someone yeah. that was an amazing guitar player. Or there was some band that was just really phenomenal for a bunch of high school kids. But the songwriting thing I had going pretty early on. And by the time I was 16, I started, I sold a couple of songs to a publisher. And then at 18, I got a song covered by a group called the Weather Girls who had had a big hit with a song called It's Raining Men. Oh, um, yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. Like, that, okay. that wasn't my song, but I had, but my first cover was like a song on their, their next album. And so yeah. I'm 18 years old. I don't know what the hell I was doing. And from that came my first sort of publishing deal where I was now writing songs and getting paid to write songs while I was in college. So I left college really wanting to be a, uh, uh, like, keep in mind, this is like when I graduated college it was late eighties. So you had a yeah. lot of like George Michael and Steve Winwood and Phil yeah. Collins and Michael yeah. Bolton and Phil Prince Collins. and all these male solo superstars. And I wanted to be one of those guys. So I got out there and I was going to be like the white Prince. That's what I used to say. Cause I was kind of funky, but I did yeah. everything, played all the instruments <laughs> and all that. And honestly, after a couple, just even just, Barely two years, I realized that rather consciously or unconsciously realized I didn't really have what I was going to need to have to be a performing artist. Like what, you, what that required of you in terms of an appetite for like playing gig after gig after gig and crappy places where there's three people there and no one's listening to you and just the rejection. And, and at the same time, I was also playing my demos for like record label people that I'd meet, they'd all say the same thing. They'd come and see me and then they go, well, on the demos, you sound like this kind of contemporary pop guy, but then I come and see you and you're like this shredding guitar player guy. Yeah. I can't get really a sense of what you are. And I started to think, I think I'm a songwriter. 
I think I'm just a guy that likes to write all kinds of stuff. And so the first, there you go. the first thing that started to happen for me was I was working in a studio. There was a lot of Latin hip hop guys in and out of there. And I ended up starting to write songs for these Latin hip hop artists, which I knew nothing about. wasn't even necessarily into the genre at all. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I have got my first charted like Billboard Hot 100 charted song uh, with one of these Latin hip hop girls. This girl named Karina it got to about number 47 on the charts, which mm-hmm. looking back, wow. I'm thinking like, wow, that was really cool at the time. Oh, wow. Let me tell you something. The minute you have a song on the charts. So like, yeah, a buddy of mine was working at Epic Records in in marketing and I go up to his office and the new billboard was sitting on his desk. And I go, hey, you know, but the song is called Whispers. The, I think that, that, that came out a few weeks ago. Let's just check the charts. And we checked the charts, the Hot 100. And yeah, there at yeah. number 93, new entry with a bullet was the song and my name. And we both just went like, <gasps> wow. And we looked at each other almost like a couple of Jewish mothers. We were like, if it never goes one number higher, <laughs> this yeah. is a huge. <laughs> if it never, if it drops off next week, you have been validated. You are in the game. But here's how it works. Within two or three days, I'm calling around. Hey, do they have the numbers for next week? I'm just curious. If, I mean, I don't care. Obviously. <laughs> I win. It got to 93. It was the 93rd most popular song in America. Amazing. But did it go up next week? Oh. It's at 72 next week. Oh my God. And then it was at then it was at 63. Oh, holy crap. Then it was at 54. Yeah. Then it went to 51 and it lost the bullet. And oh, I went the bullet through my head. Like I was so invested by that point. I heard a really funny saying at the time. You want to meet the most depressed songwriter in America? Meet the guy who's got the number two song in the country. <laughs> there you go. Because <laughs> it have you ever watched the, you ever watched the deal or no deal? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah me and Matt. Oh, yeah. Isn't it oh, amazing yeah. how oh, like yeah. an unemployed plumber is playing the game? Yeah. And within, yeah. 10, yeah. Minutes, yes. within yes. 10 minutes, the banker is offering him $600,000 to yeah. walk away. Yeah. And he's like, yeah. No deal. <laughs> because there's two briefcases yeah. and one of them has $1 and one of them has a million dollars. Yep. And how incredible, just the, the human condition within 10 minutes, the, your perspective gets so insane that you don't realize that you're turning down more money than you'd make in 15 years at your job. Yeah. 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 And then yeah. he walks out of there with a dollar. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. Like, it's like, oh my God. So how he knew what he was like, doing? Want the charts. Yeah. Like you, everything. So that was my first time like kind of in the game on the charts and from then it just kind of went you yeah. know more and more that started to happen and right and yeah had, i mean and then over the years i had a lot of stuff with celine dion i had a lot i had jason mraz i discovered avril lavigne got her yeah. signed worked a lot of her yeah. first record nice. vanessa carlton was a big artist for me not as a songwriter vanessa carlton as a talent developer so the song thousand miles i didn't yeah. write it but if it hadn't been for me she wouldn't have finished writing it because she didn't like what it like. She had the little, but that wasn't yeah. kind of what she wanted to be. She wanted to be more dark, like Tori Amos, like mm-hmm. on an apple, yeah. like, oh, I men, you bastards. And, you know, it was that like <laughs> post Alanis Morissette era of like, I don't know. And this was like a little pretty Billy Joel kind of style thing. <laughs> and I literally, I had to yeah. force her. I wouldn't let it go until she finished the song. And then it was the song that it is. And it was brilliant. And luckily I had a little piece of the publishing because I wasn't writing. That was my deal. Like I yeah. won't write. Cause I just thought she could write her whole album herself anyway. So then, yeah. So it was, it was always about that for me. I, I got very much into the talent development thing. Uh, got involved with a lot of great artists. The first artist I ever developed that got a record that I got a record deal for was Billy Porter. Who's now yeah. like a superstar, but this is back in like 1996. Nice. And they wanted him to wow. be Usher. And he was this, this flamboyantly gay man and a yeah, flamboyantly yeah. gay black man, which was like a double whammy for him to deal with out in the world. Um, and the label wanted him to be Usher. Yeah. They wanted him to be one of those guys. And he just wasn't that guy. He was just like the greatest. He was an insanely great singer. Um, but I was very, very into that. And Billy and I are still actually really close. Like That's I, I, awesome. Yeah. If we face awesome. him, like. Yeah, he's doing he's an awesome. album very slowly, cool. and he res- <laughs> we resurrected a song that we that we did back then that wasn't on the album that I did with him. So yeah. he's going to do it for this album, and 
we're going to do some other things together too. He's, he's a wonderful, wonderful guy. And he's yeah. as outrageous and crazy and loud and out and proud as he seems. He was, he's, he's got like the integrity of that guy is uh, unimpeachable. It's amazing. But anyway, kind of in the weeds on this long, long answer to your question, but yeah, I, it became all about song went to me. And then around 2010, a buddy of mine from Atlantic records, was now working at Nickelodeon. He was like their senior uh -huh. talent. And he called me up. We have a show, Fresh Beat Band. Yes. Be interested in writing a song for it. I was like, oh, wow, that's actually, I know that show. Um, I really don't think, I think the songs could be better, actually. I remember watching the show and thinking, these could be cooler songs. And they're doing yeah. it. It doesn't have to be so childish and almost like Barney level music. Or the Wiggles. Yeah. Right, right, exactly. Whereas like I grew up and it's like Electric Company, Sesame Street, those shows had yeah. awesome songs. Yeah, they, oh, yes. they, they, they really did. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Like it's not easy being green. Like, yes. Yeah, that's a good song. That's like one of the greatest yeah. songs ever written. That's like that's like that's like Wizard of Oz level. Like, amazing. Yeah. I know. So, and maybe, like I'm not saying I could yeah. write the Wizard of Oz, but I'm just like, why couldn't this show have bad? and it was a passing thought? I was watching with my yeah. kids, I think. So I was like, oh, wow. Yeah, I know that show. I'd love to write some stuff, so a song for that show. So I wrote a song and it was a real kind of game changer song for the show. Yeah. Because they then went, oh, wow, we could have stuff like this, real pop songs. Because it went, the song went like number one on iTunes. Like it just. Yeah, front line. Really, so wrote like, you know, about five or six more songs for that, whatever was left yeah. of that season. Uh, won an Emmy for that, for those songs. Nice. Wow. And that was what That's really. Awesome put me in the game where I was like, wow, this is like, this is cool. And then the following year I got nominated for best original song for Peter rabbit, a song. I'm. Oh really uh, yeah. Like. Yes. Um, but yeah, lots of shows. Uh, one you didn't mention is rusty rivets. I wrote the theme so song. For oh the yeah. Okay. Series. Yeah. That was a big show. I ran for three yeah. seasons. I don't know why it didn't keep going. I know going into the third season, they were like the third biggest preschool show on TV. I know, yeah, like certain kids' networks, like Nick Jr. and like PBS, like they had some really good shows, but they just, for whatever reason, just didn't keep going for that yeah. long. Yeah. And you yeah. also did Winx Club, which I remember seeing the music video for the song you actually did on that. It was pretty good. Congrats oh, the one on with, that. with uh, Liz Gillies? Yes. Yeah. Liz yeah. Liz is amazing. Yeah. yeah that, that, I really like that song. That was, um, it's that awesome. Was, thank you. That was, was my awesome second well. attempt. You should have heard the first, the first version I wrote. <laughs> I wrote something that was oh, really cool, me, I, I, but I it was a little. <laughs> Honestly, the, over if you still have it. <laughs> the trick, you know what? I gotta find it now. You actually got me thinking about it. I gotta find. It. I'm so there terrible at keeping my own stuff. But like, I wrote this song and it was a big conference call. Yeah, and everyone was kind of like a little nervous because what when I hand in something, it sounds like a finished record. Mm -hmm. the first time you hear, because I don't have any faith that people can hear through a rough work in progress. Maybe one of my friends can, but any executive at any network, they could be the coolest, greatest, most creatively talented executive whatever you show them in their ears is definitive it's the song it just is they they, they can't hear where you are along a, an arc of development right they just hear you know every songwriter has disclaimers when they play songs for people like listen it's not done i really don't know if the verse is right and it's a bad mix i'm gonna yeah. do the track it won't matter you'll still hear and go yeah i didn't really like the song <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah i would always end in like you know produced so they get on the phone and we're having this long meeting and they're giving me these notes and there's so many notes and they're, they're, they're spoon feeding in such a kind way that I finally just cut it off. I was like, guys, why don't I just write another song? And when told, it's like, they're like, Oh, uh, I mean, we, are you sure? Like guys, yeah, yeah. you guys are like, Holy crap. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I don't want you guys to be walking on eggshells. Like you're going to hurt my feelings. Like I, 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 I missed. I mean, exactly. If you oh, if you work on something, you want yeah, to be told and, how it actually is. Yeah. And it was like, yeah. You know, yeah, it's just a little. How they put it for weeks ago, they said, yeah, it's just a little too black leather for yeah. the Winx Club. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. It was a little. Yeah. It was a little. This song is called "We Are Believing." By the way, what's yeah, it? Yeah, we, we are believing. We are believing. Yeah. yeah. So, so then the second one I wrote was that one, and they just absolutely just. That's why they got Liz Gillies to come and do it. They were just there. You go. I was that like, was, they, want, awesome. they want Katy Perry. They want like a Katy Perry vibe. So and, you know, that, and Liz and Liz Gillies at the time, like she was huge. Yeah. Like you know, More Victorious, Victorious was yeah. like big, big show back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, I was I was excited to ever do it. I didn't I didn't interact with her at all. I just 
got it sent to me when it was done. And mm-hmm. I never yeah. actually didn't like the vocal because I was very used to the way it had been sung by the other girl. But now mm-hmm. I don't understand what I didn't like. It's, it's great. Sounds great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And okay. back on the Fresh Beat band, you know, A Friend Like You, which I know you wrote, that is yeah. like an amazing. Yeah. yeah. It was the first song. Amazing song. Yeah. That was the first one. And I, to this day, I will wow. put that every once in a while and go like, damn, man, that is a, that is a cute little, little song. Um, yeah. Yeah. It that, really that is. I went it out really there. is for what you did. And because most of the Fresh Beat Band songs, I think, early on were more about like just getting up and just dancing and, you know, yeah, they, like, yeah. They, no bananas. They, they didn't really have like a whole lot of just kind of very simple. The production was really kind of lame for me. It just was. Yeah. What other songs did you write? They for didn't. That? Uh, or, I'll tell you the Fresh Beat songs I wrote. Well, first yeah, I, wrote the theme song, yeah. I wrote the theme song for the animated series Fresh Beat Band of Spies. Uh, yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Forgot about that. A, re- a couple of other uh, the re- other really good ones I did for the series were um, uh, music keeps me moving. Yeah, a really fun track. That's a good one. And then that I did uh, just another perfect day, which yeah. is which was that was the cast's favorite, I think. And then I did one based on uh, a ballet episode they were doing. They wanted me to do something based on the melody of Swan Lake. Uh, yeah. So a song called mm. "Surprise Yourself," which I really like a lot. Uh, then I did the finale song called like Fresh to Be Home, I think it was yeah. called. Oh. And then I did a song that was like a bonus song. They just asked me to do a song for the album mm-hmm. that you guys should check out. It's called um, Nobody Does You Better Than You. There you go. We'll put that in the description. Really fun. Yeah. Fun song. <laughs> really like. Really good song. Um, yeah, I'm really proud of those songs. And that, and that whole show, like the album almost went gold. The album sold like 300,000 copies. Yeah, I heard about it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, but no, it, it was it was great that, you know, with a friend like you, like it's a song about it it it's not like a big crazy like just getting up and it's, you know, a wholesome, very wholesome and genuine kind of song. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, a, that's what about, I like. It's kind of like a friendship song in a way. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Being friends. That's what I found out about writing songs for that market is you you can write a very cool song for that market exactly look at the mm-hmm. Pharrell song, look at happy you know it's like it you, you it doesn't have to be lyrically and also i found it you know they say about toddlers like little little kids yeah, yeah. That they crave boundaries if yeah. you let them run around yeah. like they're going to be screaming yeah. throwing tantrums you can't control them. if you give them boundaries set things a certain way it actually makes them feel safe and within that they can play and have fun right. yeah i found that to be true being a songwriter for that world in that you get a brief that tells you okay we, we need you not to use these words stay away from like spelling anything um we want to hear these words somewhere in the lyric mm-hmm. and it should be you know, 40 seconds long and here's some, here's, you know, a uh, fifth harmony track and a Dave Matthews track and a something else track that we, that we kind of wanted to live in that. I mean, those two things would have nothing to do with each other, but you know what I mean? <laughs> there you go. Tracks. <laughs> here's a sex pistols track and a Barry Manilow track. Yeah. Sound like. <laughs> uh, but that kind of, those kinds of limitations, quote unquote. Yeah. Were actually very freeing in a weird way. And they made me a better songwriter. Um, yeah. So I I really loved it, and I actually miss it. I haven't done much of it this past year at all. I don't know what's going on. Um, there's been a lot of things going on with my own career that I'll I'll hip you guys to that I think you'll find you might find surprising, you might not, because I've been talking about it. On yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like I um, yeah, I guess that kind of brings us up to date. I mean, as a songwriter, you asked me what made you become a songwriter. Yeah. <laughs> <We'll talk>. yeah. <laughs> I know this is not on the question list, but I think Marty should ask the Blue's Quiz and You question. Because I know really? there's two over there. I think oh, we should really? Marty out. I think okay. Marty has a question. Uh, by the way, was, uh, but, but one more thing about Fresh Beat Band that you guys with a couple things you'll think are cool. Just, just kind of yeah. interesting, you know, like, uh, nostalgia, like not nostalgia, but, but you'll, you'll see. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? It doesn't matter. Um, first of all, I'm, I'm still friends with everyone from that show. Yeah, but, like, Terry Well, John Beavers, who played the DJ, was over here last week having cigars. Yeah. Um, we might try to get him. Oh, that, that is cool. awesome. He's that cool. Is... Oh, I'll get him on your show. Done. So I'm, I'm going to interrupt you. I'm sorry. Nice but we're, we might be having terror on in the future. Yeah, I can get you all of them. I can get you Yvette. Yvette's a sweetheart. Uh, Tommy is awesome. 
They're 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 like the fresh people. Oh, yeah. like Tommy's people. definitely awesome. He's still yeah. he's on a he, new Nickelodeon show yeah, called Wet awesome. Wrecker like, Yeah. Yep. And like y- Yvette and I there we go. Yvette and I sp- have spent time. We've we've had yeah. meetings, we've wrote a song once, we've uh we're we're like legit friends. And then John Beavers, I saw recently, I saw I don't know if you, any of you guys see the movie Licorice Pizza. No, I've heard of it. Yeah, I think I saw like a Jimmy Fallon. Yeah, the new Paul Thomas Anderson film. John Beavers is in it, he, and he's got like, Ooh, a, like a nice little that's, part. That's and he cool. came on the screen, and I leaned over to my girlfriend. I was like, "That's that's that that's a dude from Fresh Beat Band. That's John <laughs> like he's he, <laughs> he just re- he's a creepy guy at this. He's creepy. You know, mm-hmm. but John is a serious actor. I mean, he is. A, he is. Comedy. He's really yeah. yes, and he's in. He's on a lot he's of. Cool. T- TV series, and he's got a lead in the movie that's out right now. It was on an episode of uh, Tommy's new Nickelodeon show with Tara. Yeah, both, yeah. Yeah, right. both yeah. of them he's were on an episode. Much more, much more adult like Netflix. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Right. He's, yeah. It's really good. He's done like yes, yeah. just really so just insane me, amounts of acting. He told me that when they went on tour, you know, Nickelodeon made a big mistake. They didn't retain the rights to the tour. They let Live Nation have them, and that tour became this. That's a very. <laughs> like, oh, I didn't know that. We got a new. Oh, wow. Uh, if he has any questions. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll let you continue first. Yeah. Uh, so um, yeah. they went on this tour, and no one expected it to be as successful as it was. But you know that they that when they, their first tour, they sold more record, they sold more tickets than the Red Hot Chili Peppers or Bob Dylan. Wow! Wow! What? That is now awesome. that's something wow. I never knew. Isn't that mm. crazy? You, uh, you, you wouldn't expect you know. that from kids band and then they do right. it Mm-mm. but then when you think Mm-mm. about it it makes sense yeah it does because they were so yeah. popular it's, and their parents were. like wanted to go and they just thought it was cool the parents wanted to see the band they, exactly they go, you know? mm-hmm. right anyway yeah. all right, I, just, I just went back to that for a second but yeah uh, blues blues and news somebody want, uh, someone was asking yeah. Uh, yeah. also yeah. you did <laughs> acting yourself which is amazing well that's, that's what I'll right. get to we'll talk about that later but yeah. Mark yeah. Uh, we'll lead up to that yeah Matt Matt is actually a huge fan of yes. Blues Blues and News. There's a certain monster here that's a huge fan. Hi. Yes. Mm-hmm. Hi. <laughs> hello, Marty. Uh, for the, for, hello. Yeah, for it's Marty Marty. This, is, this is Marty Monty. Hello. Marty, I, 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 did, I, didn't get, I didn't get your last name. Monster. Uh, monster. Marty Monster. Simple. <laughs> yeah, simple, yeah, monster. simple last name. Simple last <laughs> anyway, name. Anyway, Marty, monster. what is your question? Um, my question is um, we, we kind of touched up on the uh, the Fresh Beat band earlier, uh, with like favorite songs. Um, yeah. Do you, do you have a favorite song from uh, Blues Clues and You? Yeah. And how did Blues Clues and You come about for you? Yeah. How how'd that come about yeah. for you? Because because Nick Balaban and Michael Rubin, who did the original show, yeah. Uh, th- those are some. Uh, those are some. Those were some pretty big. Uh, sh- those were some big gaps to fill you know it's, yeah yeah it's like, it's like iconic like so my relationship with nickelodeon that. over the years was really strong um so they would frequently come to me to yeah uh to pitch you, you you never get you don't really get hired to write a theme song they'll hire you to write an episodic yeah. song right and themes you always have to win you have to win the theme so i won the rusty river theme i won the fresh band of spies theme lost yeah. tons of other ones so they came to me um when I first moved out here and said, Hey, we're relaunching blues clues. Yeah. And yeah. We'd love for you to pitch. And it was a very general brief because they didn't have a theme song to the original blues clues. It was just that kind of. Thing. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Which mm-hmm. I actually had in the original demo of my thing because they asked for that a little guitar slide. Um, and then they just had a bunch of reference tracks that actually I was joking about it earlier, really were, had very little to do with each other. Yeah, uh, mm. and I am my age. I I missed the Blues Clues thing, so I never really watched this. I knew the general yeah. format. I'd seen yeah. parts of it. I knew I knew the for the Steve thing and how it yeah. worked. And yeah, it was a really cool show, and I knew that the music was very kind of bluesy, jazzy, jamming, like mm-hmm. like like yeah. real instruments. Right. It wasn't it wasn't like high energy pop. It wasn't like super colorful stuff. It was like vibey and chill and and like sophisticated and. I thought it was really, really cool, but they wanted a theme song, like an orga- organic leaning kind of a pop song. And uh, I kind of just didn't really know. I felt like an imposter in a way because I felt like I had to educate myself really quickly to how this show works. So I started watching bits of it on YouTube. Yeah. And the what I came up with initially, I was going for like Fleetwood Mac, like, 
Oh yeah, I know. Uh, who they are. Uh, remember the, Do you guys know the song "Secondhand News"? No, but I know I'm um, "Go Your Own Way" from Fleetwood Mac. Well, right, but not as intense. Same album, but yeah. Down, 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 <laughs> down, 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 down. Yeah. Down, 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 down. Do you know that song at all? No. Uh, great, great little. Rhythm, my parents might. But like, but like, <laughs> on sunny. So I kind of started with that instrumental vibe, and I think the uh, the the little bass part. Was cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is kind of a little like Stevie Wonder, uh, I wish, uh, vibe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, don't know, I wanted yeah. it to sound like a little jammy, and I yeah. just uh, yeah. Over the course of like three or four days, I just came to that complete song and um found out that there were 60 songwriters pitching. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it, many uh, to count. Yeah, you hear that with people I, just, I mean, wait, don't hear about yeah. that with songwriters. I mean, there was, there was way more for, for getting the role of like yeah. the new host. Oh my gosh. But, yes, I mean, Mar- it, it was, it was Mar- crazy. Like, Marty, yourself, you could have been the new host. I could have seen it. I could have. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I really, I, I really need more have. diversity, like Marty in children. Yes, yes, yes. Oh we God. totally do. Yes, you hear that? Puppet, puppet. Listen, I mean, he's a, to I mean, he's li- literally a person of color or yeah. a creature of well, color. well, <laughs> color, but, you know. creature of color, well. sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, cool. um, yeah. But yeah, so I um, and then it came down to it. Really, at the end, came down to me versus uh, Balaban. That the original guys they had written some apparently that was really, really good, also. Yeah. And oh, yeah. what I was told was if they want to go for something that is more like the classic sound of Blues Clues, they're going to go with that one. If they want to do something a little more contemporary that kind of mm-hmm. slaps a little more, they're going to go with your song. So Cuz it's like cuz it's like a newer yeah. generation. Yeah. You want to bring like a exactly. new to the show. And I thought yeah. uh, then they'll 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 play it safe and go with those guys, but whatever, mm-hmm. I got pretty far. Yeah. I was shocked That's that awesome. I, got it. I was shocked that I got it and um it's been it's been great fun. And yeah, they, they, um, I, I think I just came, it just came to me from Nickelodeon. Then I became very good friends with Angel Santomero and, and nice. oh, yeah. 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 Josh, Josh did amazing with it. Amazing. And he's, yeah, he's amazing. Uh, oh, yes. We might be trying it's to wonderful. get him in the future. I can help yes. you too. I got, you. Him on, I got him on uh, Bob's show. Oh, there you oh go. yeah, wow. that's right. I remember yeah, Bob uh, yeah, telling me about yeah. that. Yeah, 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 it took yeah a little, I, I remember that episode. Like, Wonderful yeah, episode. Yeah, stay on these guys a bit, but that has nothing to do with them. He was also on Purple Road's podcast. That's oh, right. Wow. Yeah. Yes, he, he's a sweetheart. He's just a yeah, guy. he is. He's wonderful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What? What shows did you not get that you you said you didn't get ones? Which ones did you not get? I'm just kind of curious. Uh, let's see the ones I could remember. I didn't get um, uh, Shimmer and Shine. Yeah, uh, I forgot that show. I Heard love of it. the song I wrote for that. I listened to it the other day. It was so good. I think it's whatever. I think it was better than that. Uh, <laughs> I didn't get Sunny Day, but I did write a lot of songs for the show. Yeah. I, I didn't mm-hmm. win the theme song, and I definitely felt like my song was was great. There's a lot of reasons why they'll go with one song over another, and a lot of people make the decision. They'll have a production yeah. company with a lot of people. Yeah. Here's another one I won is a, a, a mini series called Middle School Moguls. Oh yeah. Mm. Oh yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. And it came mm. down to me versus one other song, and they literally came down to a blind vote. Just like 20 people, just write on a piece of paper, and we'll see which song gets more votes. And my yeah. Oh wow. I found out the same day I got that in Blues Blues. I was like, um, oh wow. Yeah. That's wow. That, was, that was just a mini series. Like, Four episodes. Mm. I thought this was gonna yeah. be the whole thing. Uh but Blues Clues has been great because I also like if you buy a toy that has the theme song, I get a little. Yeah. I get oh it. yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Now, did yep. you do? Now, did you do like the background like music pieces the that are that, the only thing on that song that's not me is Josh's lead vocal. Every other voice, right? Is right. It's just me. Oh wow! Oh wow! Yeah. Wow! Okay, that is. Those lights over there. That's like part of the drums. Literally, me with two pans on. Oh wow! Oh wow! Uh, wow! wow. Looking, you so sure like your nose skin. There's, yeah. there's, there's a Lacroix can in there somewhere. Wow! You did a great job on that. Yeah, you, you, did. you, really, you really did. did. You really did. You really. It's did. really amazing to see a show like the first time out, and then boom, there you go. Thank yeah. you. It's I'm, the pop I'm, I'm yeah. proud of that. Song. I like that song a lot. Very, it's now on season three, if I remember right. What's that? Yeah, the, yeah. They're on season three. Yeah, yeah crawling on the that third season. Yeah. That's amazing. Oh, I hope it's awesome. Like, 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 oh, that's so crazy. Three years is always yeah, third yeah. season. Like, that's so crazy. It doesn't even feel like three years. It really does. Yeah. 
Not at all. Yeah. Whip, it, Whip is amazing. Yeah, One of the best so, Mook Kiss shows, really, um, for me. So back to something we uh, briefly uh, went on earlier. So you mentioned um, all these artists like Led Zeppelin and Same. Aerosmith, Billy Joel. Were those were those guys kind of like your inspiration for uh, you know making? Yeah, music? what in, what inspired you? Uh, yeah, I think you know I grew up in a, in a decade uh, like the seventies, where to me that was like the pinnacle for me for hmm. pop music because. Yeah. Coming out of like the Beatles and the Beach Boys and the Stones, Beatles amazing. Happened in the sixties, yeah. where just Beach Boys are awesome, are amazing. Well, the singer songwriter exploded, right? If you yeah. go further back than that, it was like matinee idols and songwriters writing songs for them. A lot of acts were more like or singing groups. The yeah. Beatles were one of the first bands that, and they started out. They were a boy band at first, you know. They yeah, to right. Covers, and then they really changed everything and they they started writing their own songs they turned out to be brilliant song obviously brilliant songwriters brian wilson with the beach boys also yes and things like that mick jagger and keith richards with the stones just like indelible classic songs yeah so coming out of that everything just sort of like like you had all these artists that that had sounded completely different from each other there were no trends really yeah. for a while there like mm -hmm. the whole yacht rock era for me where it was I would turn on the radio and in an hour I'd hear, you know, Elton John, who at the time, like Tiny Dancer was his latest song. Yeah. Like, he was so cool. I'd hear David Bowie. I'd hear yeah. Mac. I'd hear Earth, Wind and Fire. I'd hear Stevie Wonder. I'd hear, I'd hear Billy Joel. I'd hear uh, yeah, wow, Paul McCartney. I'd hear Paul Simon, you know, like just coming out with, you know, uh, Kodachrome, you know, like just wow, that is, yeah. That's forever. Amazing. And it, I, just loved it i loved the songs and it just made me try to write songs too i think that was basically it and as i simultaneously got into the guitar that became my primary instrument but i was also writing on the piano i still do um yeah so that that kind of got me into it um and also like you know some of the the hard rock bands are like aerosmith to me oh yeah um I know, you know, aerosmith. like they 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 they, they have great songs i mean yeah. Stephen Tyler is amazing. Came on and Sweet Emotion and Janie's Got a Gun and these are amazing songs. They're just great, great yes. rock, rock yeah. songs. And ACDC yeah. Cheap Trick. I was a massive yeah. Trick fan. Surrender. I want you to want me. Like just amazing songs. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, it was a lot of different things. But at the same time, I also loved George Benson, the jazz guitar player. Like I loved yeah. his. Mm -hmm. I, I I was listening to so much stuff so yeah, a lot, yeah. All of that. um and my songwriting changed over the years you know uh, yeah. yeah do you have uh, anything from uh the shows that you've worked on like anything that you want to show or any cool things that you want to show from yeah do you have anything you want to regards of your regards of your arc <laughs> oh uh i don't but uh we can talk about sort of what i've been doing lately which is yeah, where you been doing lately? Where you been up yeah. to now? We, we need to ask that to our guests. We don't yeah. do that. Yeah, yeah. And then we, I mean, we can go back to music for that. But like, yeah, so it, it's kind of weird because, you know, I had a situation last year. Yeah. Uh, like this time last year. Yeah. Um, I had been hired to be a series songwriter for uh, a Netflix kid show um, called Friends in Oz, which was ah. character from, characters from Wizard of Oz, uh, but in a new setting. Um, and Angel Santamara was the creator. She said, I want you to write all the songs. For oh, incredible. Oh, wow. You can't help us get her. <laughs> and it was, yeah, well, I probably could, but uh, I didn't end up finishing it. I worked on it for about three months, wrote about yeah. four episodes, and then they just changed the way the show was going to go, like the aesthetic of the show, and they just felt they needed a different aesthetic in songwriting mm -hmm. than they felt uh, I could yeah. do, which I, at the time, like, I think they were wrong. But there's, you know, look, I'm not going to get into this whole topic, but yeah, <laughs> there's also disadvantages when you have a show that decides that it wants to be a show about a young black girl. Mm -hmm. They become disadvantages that you're a middle aged white guy writing all the songs. Yeah, I'll just leave that there. There you go. Uh, and it was it was, you know, it was weird for me because it was very frustrating uh, because I just think at the end of the day, the person doing anything creative in entertainment should merely just be the person who's the best person for it. Doesn't matter 
right. what their affiliation right. is, what their skin color is, what their you know yeah. cultural background is, what their sexual preference, what their gender gender identity, whatever it is, it should just be whoever's the best fit for that particular project. Otherwise, the project suffers. And right. if I'm somebody, let's say I'm a person of color. I don't want it. I don't want that to be the reason that I get a job. I want to get a job because they really want me because of what I do. Right. You know I mean, it, it yeah. still becomes kind of discriminatory in a sort of ironic way that that you're not you're 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 evaluating me. You're almost profiling me because of my race, and so I get the job. Yeah. And mm -hmm. okay, but like, I I don't want the job for that reason. I want the job because what I do moved. Yeah. Me. Like not because of how you look or just just like <laughs> you know what you do. So yeah. I ended up not going. I did about three three months. Probably uh, maybe some of the songs will still be in the show. I don't even know the shows where the show's at. I, I didn't really keep track of it. Uh, and it was a great experience while it lasted. And um, yeah, not long after that, not long after that, but a month later or two, I got a a, a, a buddy of mine who co-created a show called Billions on Showtime. Oh yeah, uh, oh, okay. Hit hey. me up and said, "Hey, you want to do a, a fun thing?" I said, what's that? He goes, you want to be like, you want to be on an episode of Billions. Um, you would play a billionaire sportswear company owner who has a dad band. Yeah. And one of the other stars of the show is in the dad band with you. But your character is at the center of the story of that episode without going into great detail. Your character's company has some bad labor practices. And anyway. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, that sounds amazing. You know, yeah, so the so the part was going to be in, uh, it actually just aired last week. Um, yeah. And so I flew to New York for a week to do this. And um, being on that set was a life moment for me. Not that I hadn't been on a set of a show before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But being on that set and getting to actually, even just the little bit of acting that I did, I didn't even have lines, but I'm in the episode. And it shows me yeah. doing things, playing it. I was like, oh my God. So a little backstory. I was hugely into acting in college and oh, wow. high school. Very, 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 very active in wow. the theater. Uh, like serious stuff, musicals. I was almost as serious about it as I was about music. I chose music wow. as a career because yeah. I just thought it seemed like a more a, a original path with more ways to succeed than just actor who is waiting yeah. to because he's not right. getting parts. You know, I was in, yeah. I, I just felt more scared of going to, so I put that aside. And then over the many years, some friends of mine have gotten into the movie, the television business, and here and there I've gotten, I've been cast in things. I was in a yeah. Steven Soderbergh movie back in the Yes, that's what I was going to bring up. Same yeah. guys that, that do Billions uh, cast me in that. And it was super fun. It didn't make me want to get back into acting again, even though it was incredibly fun. And, uh, but I just was very much still into my music thing. Right. So, I, on that set suddenly I was like, holy crap, I'm 55 years old. And now I'm thinking like, I want to just for fun, try this again. So, and I got a lot of support from the other people around me that day, including the guys who created the show because they've seen me act. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I flew back, I came back out here uh, and I just joined a site called Actors Access that a buddy of mine told me about. And I just wrote a note to casting directors like, hey, I don't have a reel or anything, but I was very active in the past and I've done all, I have all these bona fides in the music business and now I'm re-falling in love with acting and I want to try to dabble in that as well. Yeah. That was around June. Since that time, I've booked like 18 or 19 roles in different like just short films, student wow. films, like, yeah, yeah. Like usually lead roles or co-lead roles. So I got a lot of experience really, really quickly on set acting leading a cast, developing characters. I, I, I uh, applied to Beverly Hills Playhouse, which is a really fantastic storied acting school. George Clooney went there, Michelle Pfeiffer, Jim Carrey, John Von Eric BC, a lot of amazing yeah. people. So I've been going there now, working it out on stage. It's a real theater where you're actually doing scenes with other actors in a theater for like a very prestigious teacher who gives you notes. Um, and I'm having the time of my life. I haven't written a song in probably six months. Uh, and that, I'm saying that in a positive way. Like, I am so in love with this other art form right now. I'm always going to be a songwriter. There's always going to be a reason to dip back in. One of the short films of it, I wrote a song for the character, this, like, ridiculous, like, Antonio Banderas <laughs> uh, 
like Antonio Banderas, like this ridiculous. I wear. <laughs> there you go. Antonio's like, awesome. Latin lover guy, and I wrote this really funny, fun, like flamenco we song, um, that brought all of my songwriting experience to bear to be able to do that. And it's going to be a great little moment on my reel because you're going to be like, oh wow, he also does that. But I just like I'm I'm big, big, big into the acting thing. I'm about to get my reel done. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, find representation in the next yeah. you know, months. So I can start there going some, from real things, some real series, real films and things like that. And uh, I did my first feature film about three weeks ago, my first part in a feature. Um, nice. Uh, yeah. So I'm just, I don't know. It's weird. It's like a third act for me. I think my next big songwriting thing will be fueled by the acting thing, which is along the way of all the Nick stuff I did, Yeah, I developed three or four different animated kids show ideas music driven show ideas of my own and i have full yeah. decks and episodes and music wow. and wow. a couple wow. of them are really oh, special wow. I've gotten to pitch them in some really prestigious rooms and gotten great response didn't sell one yet but now because i'm acting and i'm reconnecting with certain people i won't name names some of them yeah. then just have right, right. when you go to netflix to pitch the show tell them i'm going to be in it just tell them i'm going to be in it because there, there you go. There you go. That's how you do it. If that happens, then I'm going to be writing the songs because I love that's writing. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. Different kinds that's, of songs. Hopefully, we could see amazing. some of that. Yeah. So, yeah. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. So it's a lot. It's a lot. But yeah, right now I'm just working on a bunch of scenes for, for, my, for my acting class and putting together my wedding to get my reel together probably in the next week to two weeks. And I'm going to start. Yeah. You know, getting a manager, agent, and the whole thing. And uh, maybe the next nice. week we talk. Yeah, that's awesome. Because I'm, Very awesome. You know, in a movie. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's really awesome. Yeah. I can't wait to see, you know, what's in store for, you know, yeah. Oh, yeah. Acting career. It sounds, oh, yeah. sounds really cool. Yes. Sounds um, if, if any of you guys have Showtime, check out the episode of Billions that I was on. I mean, I'm not yeah, like yeah. super acting in it, but it's, it's fun to watch. But he's in yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll yeah. definitely yes. check it he's out. He's in it. Yeah. Going, going back <laughs> to his stuff, what's your favorite song from Fresh Beat and Blues Clues and you, you wrote? Well, Blues Clues, yeah. only did, I only did yeah. a couple songs. I did the theme yeah. song, yeah, and then song. I did, uh, and I did the Halloween song. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. 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 that is a nice nice song. Oh, yeah. That, that is cool. cool. Fantastic. It's wonderful. Be, yeah, that one. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I like that wonderful. one. Wonderful. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, so I, I like the Blues Clues theme. I think my favorite three songs that I've ever written for kids' shows are Blues Clues theme, Friend Like You, and a song I wrote for Peter Rabbit called Spring Has Sprung. That's yes. probably, oh, that's okay. yeah, that was, yeah. That's nice. probably my number one ever. Um, and that that's the one when I said I got nominated again for song of the, of the year. Yeah. That was the one I got nominated. Wow. I didn't win that time, but that I that is amazing. that song. Wow. I will say this. After we did the DJ Bob interview, we hang, hung out with him for a bit. And Chris actually played that song. That song's amazing. Oh, thank you. It oh, is, wow. Yeah, it's amazing. That 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 represented something special because that's all me. That's me singing it. it it's my voice. It's like it's oh, just, wow. I was alone the wow. whole time. And when you're alone the whole time, you create something, right? Like there's no yeah. other person oh, to yeah. bounce ideas off. And then you get like an Emmy nomination. It it it's it's a wow. way of telling you in a big way, like yeah. you're not crazy. You is, you know what I mean? Like that's crazy. If you hear those successes in the right way, you don't let them swell your head. Yeah, uh, right. Yeah. They, right. they, they, if anything, just they validate you in a very healthy way where you go, I can do this. Like, I, I clearly have good instincts at doing this because this, this spoke to people, this evoked a reaction. Mm -hmm. you know? um, oh, yeah. So that's, those are like the best moments is when you, you when you find out that you're not crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh man, that's awesome. Um, another question about the uh, Fresh Beat band is uh, if they were to do anything new in the future with it, would like you uh, would you uh, come back to write to stuff? Well, of course, I would love to do that. I, I mean, I, I don't know if that'll happen. You know, I think what happened with, a, with without getting too into business stuff, I think the uh, I think the challenge for the network, I think like the reason Fresh Beat Band of Spies only ran one season was they were so in in the red uh on the on the show even though it was yeah. a, it was a hit show but it was an incredibly expensive show mm -hmm. so yeah. when the animated show it, it did fine but they just decided what it's going to yeah. cost us to do another yeah. season 
It was a financial decision. It wasn't even a ratings decision. It was like, and I didn't even blame. Um, I thought, I thought, okay, yeah, if I'm forty million dollars in the red, obviously, I <laughs> another there you go. Yeah, yeah. I do another season. Right. I'm just, just going to probably lose money. Like it just didn't make any sense. So they just sort of retired the brand. Yeah. I'm. I'm I'm curious why they didn't just keep touring. I I you know because they were doing. I mean, I know. but also the act like they, yeah. they they could have too like they, they yeah were, you know they were that would have yeah that would have been that's that probably been cool. why we saw I think one of those this concert they were on TV actually we saw it oh, yeah. yeah it was because uh, actually, actually I forgot what it was I can't remember uh, it was something Fresh Beat Live in concert I think and other yeah, children's yeah, acts special. like other children's acts like the Imagination Movers yes. for example and there's yeah. When they're their still sh- going when to this day. Yeah, when their show yeah, w- went going. off the air, you know, they still continued touring and they still are. So one of yeah. the one of the shows that I've developed, I developed yeah. with the producer of, of uh action movers. Wait, what's it called? Imagination movers. Imagination yeah. movers. Yeah, I developed this guy Scott Bright and I developed one of the ideas that I'm most excited about. Um and we've reconnected, mm-hmm. we sort of re-upped yeah. it. I wrote some new songs for it and we're going to go back to, to networks with it. I don't know why he's incredibly busy. When you're a producer on TV shows, it's, I don't know how he does what he does. It's I can imagine. Yeah. I can I, imagine. I can imagine. Well. Organizational uh-huh. mind that I can't comprehend. Uh-huh. Being Speaking around. of the movies, I know hey, Jakey man. mentioned this in the Wendy episode when we had Nina on, but we plan on having all four movers here in the future for the podcast. At some point. At some point be crazy. Yeah. Yeah, and who knows? You know, again, on uh, with Fresh Beat Band, who knows? Maybe we can have all those guys on. Let's do it. Shout out, um, Tommy can I, still hit the high note of Go Bananas. I know for a fact. <laughs> oh yeah, Tommy's a great singer. I, he is. Oh yeah, he, they're great. They're great. all amazing singers, but I mean, Tommy, yeah. he's like Yvette, on a Yvette whole other level going to this day. Yeah, but also Yvette, like yeah. even like in like Friend Like You. So there's a rap, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. and, I asked her, and I wrote it, and it was different than that one. And they go, "Is it okay if the guy that plays the DJ messes around with the rap and kind of does his own take on it?" Yeah, and a part of me yeah. was like, well, "What guy that's the DJ?" Uh, I'm sure, fine, of course, you're buying the song for me. You do whatever you yeah. want. Uh, and then I heard what he did, and it was better. It was just better than what I. Well, what I did was more like. It was busier. It was harder to do. It was more like he understood I can do a rap and I can make it simpler and more fresh beat than what Peter did, which is more just right. yeah. cool rap yeah. part of the song. And yeah. I and I always bring that up, but he he gets all like kind of goofy and uncomfortable like that. I that you know, because he's <laughs> he's he's a John is a multi, he's like a multi-tool player that, that dude he is, is. Yeah, he's an insanely really talented is. actor and very yeah. talented and he's an really acting good. teacher too like i've i've gotten yeah. a lot of just hanging out with them like as actors uh well, have like, on. you know it's really 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 yeah. been, been helpful do you have any but any advice for people who want to get into the stuff you're doing like, now or? like acting oh, or yeah, you know sure. mostly songwriting there's no one way but there are overall things that you have to be vigilant and willing to do and mm-hmm. you talent's mm-hmm. nice that's nice and, uh, and at the end of the day like you do have to have talent yeah. but you don't have to be the most talented to be the most successful i would argue that right. some of the most successful yeah. people had some talent but they willed themselves to greatness because they just wanted it worse than anybody else they were willing to work harder than anybody else um yeah yeah. So you have to be willing to be relentless in your pursuit, not just of creating, but in in researching and 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 networking and getting a hold of someone and and just not being afraid to email them and call them until they finally talk to you without coming across like a stalker, but like in a way that they right. finally just give in and they they just let you you know they give you three minutes of their time. Mm-hmm. You have to be willing to believe that yeah you have the solution to someone's problem out there in what you write or how you act or the music you do and you just need to find that person you don't need to go out there thinking i'm the best and that's why i'm gonna win because i'm the yeah. best yeah. you're not no one's the best everyone like mm-hmm. we all do great stuff and crap this crappy yeah, and you know, it's not and we can like you you may and you and you may or may not be the best for that particular thing that you're trying to do I've stumbled into my success. I happened, but here's the thing. I showed up. 
I happened to, like I made a deal with a recording studio that I would help out at sessions in exchange for free studio time. That's how go. I met all the Latin hip hop guys because I hustled. And, and then what <laughs> I would do with the, Latin, hustle. with the Latin hip hop guys, <laughs> it was my job to like drive one of them to 7-Eleven so he could get beer. Well, <laughs> in my car driving up to 7-Eleven, I'd be like, you want to hear a song that I wrote? And they'd be like, yeah, man, pop it in. And that's how I got to write songs for their artists. That's how I got on the charts, you know, but you have to be, yeah. you have to believe. Yeah, I know it's the old cliche, but you just really do have to believe and you can never give up. Yeah. yeah. And what I've, heard a, what I've heard a lot of from like just listening to interviews with like other actors is the hardest part uh, to some actors is not even the acting part. It's hearing no and yeah. getting, you know, rejected. That's, mm -hmm. you know. I think I think it's a nice thing to be around other people that are also trying to do it who you respect mm. and and watch their frustration and how many no's they're getting. Right. Because yeah. look, I, I I won blues clues, right? Yeah. But I lost the previous 19 things that I tried for. Yeah. And I remember at the time that I hadn't yet won blues clues. I I pitched for middle school moguls and blues clues and i hadn't won one in a while yeah and i remember i was on the phone with a friend of mine i had just moved out to la i had a certain amount of money i was terrified of running through it and i said to my friend i think i had just pitched for something that i really really thought i nailed and i didn't <laughs> get it and then i get oh middle school moguls oh blues clues <laughs> and I had, I had done both of my pitches for those, killed myself, sent them in, and a week or two had gone by and I'd heard nothing. And I remember being on the phone with a friend of mine and said, I, I don't think I got those either. And I said, I'm really scared. If I don't win one of these, I'm going to be in trouble. And, and yet, I know that if I don't win one of these and they send me another one to try for, I'm going to try yeah. just as hard. I'm going to put all the same amount of effort in that I did. I can't help it. I have to make it. I have to at least know that they got the best from me that I could do. It might not be the best of what they need, but the best, uh, like, where I don't second guess, like, shit, I should have spent more time on that. I should have spent right. time yesterday. I didn't work hard enough. For that. No, what they got from me, I left it out on the field, right? Yeah. So I remember, um, um, Oh, I had, there was another cool part of the story and I'm now blanking on it, but I just, Oh, we'll come back. so, so, so I find out that there's 60 writers for blues clues. Yeah. Right. But I find out oh, oh, yeah, right. there's, they're already down to five of us. Yeah. Five songs. You're one of them. Oh, but they have some, they want you to try a couple things like start with the chorus and then go to them. Can you do that? Yeah, yeah, sure. I'll do that. And then I don't hear anything. Yeah. And I don't hear anything for another week, another two weeks. And the middle school mogul is not hearing anything about. And then I emailed, uh, her name's Colleen Fitzpatrick. She was the, um, the head of music and quality and dear friend of mine. Amazing. She used to be vitamin C, the singer of vitamin C. She's now, a oh, big wow. executive. yeah, she's a big music executive at Netflix. Now she's a really oh, she's human, awesome. impressive nice. human being nice, and, and a great human being. So, um, I emailed her and I said, Hey, I just want to let you know, like by now I'm assuming I didn't get either of them. And I just want to let you know how much I appreciate that you guys come to me with these opportunities. And I'm looking forward to taking a swing on the next one, like something like that. Because I felt like I needed to do a little bit of hustle, a little bit of politicking and just, even though I was dying inside. Yeah. And then she wrote back, no, 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 no. Nothing's been decided yet. It's just like the people were away and this guy wasn't there and, Blues Clues are falling off. Anyway, long story short, I ended up winning both of those things. Nice. Yeah, the key part of this was when I didn't think I won, I still said, I'm going to try just as hard on the next one. Right. The people yeah. that win are the people where there's no point that they go, yeah, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. Now, you may get that way and you're like, I sort of, with the pop music industry in general, I'm kind of over it. I don't mean that sounds negative, but I'm just not really into it anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I just don't love a lot of what's out there now. I like yeah. it. Yeah. So the biggest artist, whether it's Lil Nas X or Drake or. Yeah. Yeah. I like some of it, 
but I'm not, this isn't like hearing like what a fool believes by the Doobie brothers or by Earth, Wind and Fire. When those classic like, songs. Yeah. And every now and then a pop record will just blow me away like an uptown funk or something that just yeah. like, instantly. Yeah. Like, yeah. Modern classic. Uh, yeah, there was a great I song out last year by, um, by uh, Julia Michaels and a guy named John Sachs. Called uh, "If the World Was Ending." Do you guys know that song? Oh, I know that song. Uh, I that, that song. song. No. That song. I, I know that song. I don't. I don't. I, don't. I, don't. I know it. I know. That it. took me. That know took me. You know, that was a. That was a brilliant. That's, uh, that is a good song. I know. But... Yeah. That that one as a songwriter, I was like, okay, that's that's more of that, and I'd be maybe a little more connected to pop song. I just don't want to like pretend that I have the aesthetic of the younger generation that's doing this now. I just, yeah. I just wish that there was more yeah. uh, individual artistry in it and not trend driven kind, yeah. of, kind of sound. Oh, right? yeah. Everything. I agree with you. Yeah. Absolutely agree. Yeah. Absolutely agree. Yeah. So that's, that's just, you know, I mean, I loved the 80s. I loved the 90s. I mean, Max yeah. Martin is one of my favorite songwriters of all time. Oh, yeah. I, uh, you know, nice. I grew up in the 90s, so I know. You yeah, mean. so I loved, loved all the Backstreet, Sync, Britney, that whole, oh, yeah. that boy band era, but those oh, Swedish so guys. Oh, so good. Oh, yeah. It was like amazing, amazing, amazing right. yeah. incredible yeah. songwriting. There was also Boys and Men in that era. Genius. Like, oh, yeah. absolute genius. Uh, incredible genius. I thought Dr. Luke and him and Benny Blanco, that, that trio, when they were just doing, oh my God, just yeah. like Teenage yeah. Dream or Katy Perry, like ridiculous, oh, yeah. ridiculously great stuff. So I just Absolutely. don't really hear it right now. And I'm <laughs> so in love with acting that as far as I'm concerned, I can spend the rest of my life being an actor. And every yeah. once in a while, I'll just write a song for some reason for something. And I, I'd be totally happy. You know, when you do something at a high level for like 30 years, yeah, and you get other things that you're good at also, you might sort of start to go, you know what, this is something I really like folks mm. so that, that's that's yeah. what i am now um yeah, yeah. any guys i i gotta wrap up is there anything else you want guys uh, to there is a f- would you yeah, come back um, on the podcast by the way say again would you come back we get you and maybe taught me and uh tara oh maybe. with pleasure be happy to all right yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey. um awesome. so i guess to uh really wrap up um do you have any words to say to your fans for, for right. fans of your work like both of them <laughs> all, all of us there you go all uh, of us no yeah. um, I would say really really make the most of every moment uh, uh, that you're here uh, on this planet I, I, I you know whether you're creating your relationships it, it's, it's very easy to forget that whatever you're thinking about doing in the future or tomorrow or that happened before you're, you're just in a moment that's just as important and real and it, and the future will just be another moment like the one you're in now. Yeah. So always make sure that you've got something in your life that is inspiring you. Um, and if there isn't, there can be, uh, there's always, always something new. I've had a lot of fun with some of my friends that are my age that are looking at what I'm doing and going, God, this is so cool. It's like an act three for you. And I'm like, yeah, but it wasn't planned. I just kind of fell in love with this other art. That's yeah. about equally valid mm-hmm. to yeah. or anything else. And I just love yeah. it. Yeah. Just find, um, do, do what you love. Yeah. Just yeah. do what you love. And you'll get some in life. And uh, if people want to contact you uh, on social media, where can people find you? Oh, uh, I mean, you can find me by name on Instagram. Just look up. Yeah, on I just found you before. It. Yeah, on Instagram. Social, social media will be in the description down below. So, so yep. you guys can. Fantastic. Also, yeah. this last question, I kind of want to apply to Matt as well, because I think Matt needs to answer this because we co-host, we hosts have answered this in the Q&A. What? So yeah, go ahead and ask uh, it, Chris. Uh, <laughs> uh, no. Oh, That's yeah. Right. I um, in the part of the Q&A. And- That's right. I guess yeah, uh, you weren't there for it because you weren't a co-host then. I guess because I know yet. you got to wrap up. Uh, if you can briefly answer them, um, what is something that's uh, nostalgic to you? To you, Matt. Same you with mean, you because you are now. A co-host. You mean like how do I define the word or a specific thing that makes anything? Me yeah, yeah. Like how? Uh, how what, like what's your definition of uh, nostalgia? Uh, it's it's something that you hear or see that really places you firmly in an in an earlier part of your life in a way that just moves your heart. 
Yeah. <laughs> you know, there you yeah. Go. Matt, what about you? I, yeah. I think that's, I think that's pretty much the same yeah, definition for me. Said, yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. That's, that it just, it just takes wonderful. you back to a, your, your childhood. Mm-hmm. I, I think pretty much hit the nail on the head. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, thanks again, Peter, for thank you yeah, so being much. on. Thank so you much. so much. Keep, up, yeah. the Keep up the great work of what you're doing, and I can't wait what's what will be happening for you in the future. Right. Um, thank you so, so much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. It's thank you guys. been a it's blast. Yeah. Yeah. We'll definitely have you back yeah. on. Yeah. What, no what, Jakey would definitely to, be the one to message uh, you about getting the friend. And, and like I and like and like I said again, thanks thanks to you know Bob for kind of oh yeah suggesting you to me. You know, he taught me all I need to know about like. Podcasting and all that stuff. He's absolutely wonderful. And I'll, you know, yes, he's great. Wait, wait, wait. Matt, Matt, what were you going to say? I was just going to ask, can I be on more episodes? Yes. Fantastic. Wonderful. I mean, you are. Maybe maybe bring Julius out too. And probably at some point. Yeah, I mean, like, you're like uh, like Vanna White. If this was like Wheel of Fortune, you're like the Vanna White. (laughs) (laughs) I I got to apply this to you. You should bring out Bean episodes too. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this and can we what you guys see from more in store of the podcast and hope you enjoyed this episode. And from all of us, all of you, hope you enjoyed you're it. And, it. Yep, you're, you're worth it. it. Yep. And happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. Yes. See you next Monday. See you next, Monday. Monday. next, see you next week. Bye bye. And then after that, we'll see you next Monday. Bye. Bye. <laughs> bye. bye. See you next time on another episode of Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show. Be sure to follow us on social media and stream us wherever you find your favorite podcasts. Bye-bye.